I call it unbridging. Mm -hmm. Instead of bridging, you're actually keeping stuff where it is and bring your account there. And so that was Near Protocol co-founder Ilya Polisukin talking about what they plan on doing with Near Protocol. There is so much that has happened since the last time we made a Near Protocol video. We are excited to share those with you today. A new protocol, what where Near is going, one of the hottest sectors that people are saying is gonna absolutely blow up. Well, Near Protocol just built something to be able to connect to that. Also, a massive upgrade that has been in the works for years. How Near Protocol has been performing against Bitcoin. We're gonna take a look at a Near Protocol chart and do everything near today. So before we get started, make sure to like the video. Let's start with hey, let's just say. You were in near and not Bitcoin. How would you be doing? Let's take a look at the near versus Bitcoin chart. Although it has been in a downtrend since May 16th of this year, if you were exposed to near over Bitcoin, pretty much since the beginning of the month, you would be up 25% against BTC. This is the whole thesis of investing in all coins is you want to get better returns than if you were to just park your money in Bitcoin. And well, near protocol, over the longer term, right? This is going all the way back to October of last year where Near Protocol absolutely ripped. This was a gain of around 220% against Bitcoin, of course, with some downside as well. But for the most part, since almost an entire year, you would have made more money being in Near Protocol than if you were in BTC. Near Protocol is up 18% over the last seven days. A lot of hype around AI as NVIDIA releases their quarterly earnings tomorrow. Today is Tuesday at the time of recording. We have the new Apple products coming out. AI is going to continue to be a hot button topic for investors and people speculating alike. And well, Near Protocol, if you remember, started off as an AI company. Ilya Polosukin was invited to the NVIDIA conference. The only person from crypto that was invited to go speak at the consortium. So near protocol, you can see this chart up from around $4, getting to a high of just over $5.29. We believe near protocol has still a long ways to go. We're super bullish on near protocol. One of the reasons is this shared by reflexivity research throughout 2024 near has seen a notable increase in adoption of user metrics. And we take a look here as I go to them one by one, this is a uh, daily active addresses on chains. And you can see the different color code down here, but the white at the top is near protocol at almost 2 million daily active addresses. The next one, daily transactions per chain. Again, the white is near protocol ahead of base, optimism, polygon, Ethereum, and avalanche. Next one, this is TVL by chains. So you can see here near protocol is towards the bottom, but it is creeping up. And then finally, you have the TVL and fees on near protocol it has steadily been growing so things are happening on near price has reacted uh but it hasn't reacted nearly to the to the extent that we believe it's going to go we still believe a 50 to 80 dollar near protocol is in the cards for this market cycle and one of the reasons is their continued innovation now what i'm going to share with you has been in the works for a very long time and it is finally here and could it make near protocol the most scalable blockchain out there let's take a look at Nightshade 2.0, this is a video posted from the Near Protocol X handle. So this takes sharding to the next level, right? More validators, more shards, provides decentralization and scalability. Stateless validation. We'll talk a little bit about that. Now it is live on the near protocol mainnet. And so users are growing, value is growing, and the and the uh the blockchain as well in tech is also growing. So here's from Coindesk. Near blockchain gets major upgrade to add stateless validation. Nightshade 2.0 has been on the near roadmap for years, with the first version being introduced. In 2022, it's so nice to see the top projects, and I, and I think of Cardano, and I think of Near Protocol, that put out a roadmap and actually complete the roadmap and complete the things that are on there. Some take longer than others, but at the end of the day, what they set out to do is exactly what they do. Near Protocol has deployed a major upgrade known as Nightshade 2.0, 
on their mainnet designed to improve the scalability and usability of the blockchain. As I scroll down here, the upgrade is part of Nier's effort to incorporate sharding in its core design, which if you're not familiar, sharding essentially splits up the blockchain into smaller pieces, which is supposed to be uh, allow the network to scale more rapidly and allow it to process more transactions for cheaper fees. Uh, this is a quote from the press release by Near. Near validators no longer have to maintain the state of a shard locally and can retrieve all the information they need to validate state changes or state witnesses from the network. This both improves sing single shard performance as well as adds capacity for more shards on the network. You're talking about scalability and bringing uh, and, and sharding the network even further. Stateless validation allows Near Protocol to be able to do that. Then I want to go back to the video that I saw that you saw in the very beginning. And this is again Ilya Polosukin on a podcast talking about the importance of chain abstraction and how Near is looking to dip into every single major layer one protocol out there. And as he mentioned, unbridging the bridges. So I mean, the, the way bridges usually work, right, is um, you need to like build a communication fire that goes kind of both yeah. ways. And uh, you usually need some, you know, set of trust assumptions that are kind of either, you know, like centralized, or either like mm -hmm. central server that's like cool. Yeah. <laughs> or, or you have, a, uh, you know, like client verification, like Rainbow Bridge yeah. or IBC, where you're like on the other side, inside the chain, verifying security of the other chain. Uh, first of all, it's complex, you know, IB IBC is like trying to get out of Cosmos ecosystem. Rainbow is also like, you know, only in the year to Ethereum. Uh, there's kind of a few other uh, versions of this, but it's it's been pretty like pretty limiting. The idea here is actually you don't need to communicate both way. And more importantly, the same as like, like you're kind of moving the experience to the higher level, right? That's why wallets. Yeah, that's why we're kind of abstracting things out, right? Is instead of on a smart contract level, you know, needing to bridge, you know, to to do all this. And then importantly, you you're breaking a lot of the uh kind of assumptions mm -hmm. that this chains have. Like a lot like most of the chains have an assumption around their own integrity. Mm -hmm. And this assumption can be broken, but you have social recovery and you know it restarts and get back on track. Mm -hmm. And like they are self consistent, but as soon as you add a bridge, that like that bridge is like breaking that consistency, right? Mm -hmm. Because if let's say the chain forked and then it rolled back, like but you send something over the bridge, now things are broken. Yeah. Plus, bridges become like. If I might add, on top of that, uh, and and Ilya goes on to talk about how bridges are honeypots. The fact that we all the bridge hacks we've seen and all the people that have lost money. Uh, and going back to the video, you know, he he pretty much mentions this in the very next statement, as you can see here, uh, where he talks about uh, bridges becoming honeypots. Like this honeypot, because they have all of the money, all of the communication, it's like, let's mm -hmm. break that. So instead, what we're doing is we're saying almost like, well, let's just push things out, right? Let's keep the assets where they are. Like mm -hmm. you, you issued a token, you know, Douglas hat, you issued it on Salada. Instead of trying to bridge it everywhere and make sure that Dragon of Hat, please. Dragon of Hat. Or I never the, the, the Douglas hat is on Solana. So like instead of trying to bridge it everywhere, right? And mm -hmm. and like you, because you want it to be accessible to other users, you say, well, users actually can come to Solana, have a Solana address and, and store what was had there. If you know something happens with Solana, yeah. yeah. Um that's fine. They'll roll back, they'll restart the chain, and it's all happening. Like the consistency of that, mm. of your holding of everything is there. But if you like start bridging it and you yeah. know, somebody bridges out during the fork, et cetera, it rolls back. Now you have like more, like all of this issue is kind of going away. Mm -hmm. And that's really like the conception of why I call it unbridging. Mm -hmm. Instead of bridging, you're actually keeping stuff where it is and bring your account there. And so you bring your, like your, you know, account through this remote account system everywhere you want. Let me tell you how important that is. We talk about accessibility and liquidity pools and why has Ethereum been king, right? It's because it's got all the liquidity there, all the money is there. If I can go with a near protocol account and I don't have to wait for a bridge or be afraid to use a bridge and there's tokens on Solana, there's tokens on Ethereum, there's tokens on Tron, on Avalanche, on Cardano, and I don't have to find the bridge, is it the right one? Does it have enough value in there? 
I can go to the main net, the main chain, with my near account and buy and sell and do whatever I need to do there and be completely fine. Uh, that is massive. And that is why one of the reasons we're so bullish on your protocol is because the steps they're taking to make it easier, to draw away the pain points from the end user, to make it less complicated. That is how we grow the cryptocurrency ecosystem, the blockchain network as a whole, is we got to make it simple and easy, which is what Near Protocol is doing, which is why I am so bullish on this damn thing. Another reason I mentioned in the very beginning of this video, Near Protocol is dipping into a sector that a lot of analysts are saying is going to be absolutely massive, and that is Bitcoin DeFi. As Aurora integrates Bitcoin with Near to unlock new DeFi use cases, Aurora Labs has announced the release of Bitcoin Lite client and Relayer, connecting the Bitcoin network and Near Protocol for the first time. The integration paves the way for new DeFi use cases and expands Web3 interoperability. The Bitcoin Lite client, developed by Aurora Labs, operates as smart contracts on the Near uh, network. It allows Near dApps to verify Bitcoin transactions and ensures that Near can access the latest Bitcoin chain state. And so uh, you, you have a project here that not only has its own narrative going for it as far as why we should be bullish on it, but it's also dipping into these other narratives as well. Uh, and then finally, taking a look at a near protocol chart. I'm going to zoom out to the one hour and let's take a look at where near is, where it's found its support. So you can see here bouncing off that $4.62 level as I throw on the Lux Algo price action concepts. You can see this level here from around $4.62 to $4.67. We've had about three to one buy versus sell orders, which is exactly where price saw support. Right around that $4.63 level as we've seen two consecutive strong hourly candles from near protocol. The next level we'd be looking at as far as immediate resistance would be right at this horizontal line as I drop it in here for you, which would put us right around $4.85. As you can see here on a few wicks on the hourly chart, we have uh, we have gotten rejected in this area, that $4.85. Also, the big one here, this was back on... Friday, August 23rd, we saw a massive liquidity grab that sent the price down all the way to $4.75. And then eventually, a near protocol did break that, pretty much caught this as support. And so on the way up, this is the immediate resistance that I would be looking at. Of course, this is on a shorter time frame. This is more if you're a trader, you're looking to enter into a long position. Where do I put my stop loss? Where do I put my take profit? I would be taking a closer look at that $4.85 level. If we zoom out to the daily chart on near protocol, we could potentially be forming an absolutely beautiful bull flag here on near protocol. As I remove these indicators here, you take a look, a big move up. This is your pull and then a down trending channel, which is going to be your flag. And we're already starting to see indecision in the market as the spinning top candle signifies with the high, uh, with the large wicks to the upside, large wicks to the downside, bulls and bears are in a tug of war. And if price closes around or at where price opened, it should tell you that uh, the next candle, depending on where volume comes in, depending on some of the narratives around AI, depending on what NVIDIA does and how the Q2 reports come out, we can see a massive explosion from near protocol up to that $5.58 level before we see any real resistance at the end of the day near protocol is a project that we believe in long term not just for this bull market but for many bull markets to come if you feel the same way put a number one in the comment section and also come check out our live show monday through friday at 2 p.m eastern standard time we'll see you in the next one